I don't know about you guys, but this edition of Miss Universe gave me the chills. I wanted to get this video sooner to you guys, but I actually took the time to rewatch part of the show several times before stating my opinion on it. So in this video, I'll be sharing my review of Miss Universe 2019. South Africa! First, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Raquel Pelissier. I'm a former Miss Universe contestant and finalist, and also the author of the pageant guide, The Art of Being Your Beautiful Self. Don't hesitate to give this video a thumbs up, and if you're not subscribed yet, consider doing so in this channel. I'll be discussing pageant-related topics as well as pageant and beauty tips. Before I start, let me remind you that thanks to a partnership with Caribbean Media Group, I'll be giving away six iPads in the following six months on my Instagram. So don't hesitate to follow me to stay tuned on these giveaways, but don't worry, I'll put my Instagram handle at the end of this video again. When I heard Miss Universe is South Africa, I cried for like two minutes because it brought me back to a place where it all started for me in the pageant and it was back in 2011 when I was watching Angola Leila Lopez getting crowned. Witnessing the crowning of a black woman changed everything for me and it was one of my biggest motivation to participate at Miss Universe myself. When I was competing, one of the judges was actually Leila Lopez and just having her right there when I was on stage was a constant reminder of why I was there and uh, why I started this journey in the first place. So watching Miss South Africa gracefully win the title last Sunday brought me back to that day and I just really got emotional about it. I felt like it's been a long time since a woman of color hadn't won the title and I felt like she did it for all of us who were like almost there in the past few years. I have no doubt so Sibini is going to be an amazing Miss Universe because she has a powerful message and it has surely touched me. So here's how my review is going to go. I'll first be talking about the production of the show, then about the finalists from my prediction list, who made it, who was left out of the top, who surprised me in the top. Then I'll be talking about the competition in itself, my faves in swimsuit competition, my faves in gown, my favorite gowns my faves in question and answer and then i'll finish with the winner as for the production of the show i thought the venue looked very nice the venue was tyler perry studios i thought the horizontal runway looked different for a change however it might have been challenging for the girls to walk horizontally while having to face the audience at the same time i mean on camera they looked flawless it's just that i don't know how the audience saw it and i know that i talked about the cape being unnecessary in prelims however for the show they were just beautiful because they were flowing and all the contestants of the top 10 knew how to work it flawlessly about the comedy i'm not much of a fan of the all-female comedy to choose the next Miss Universe. I mean, there's so many male and non-binary people in the pageant industry. If you think about it, so many of us, if not all of us, have been trained by male and non-binary people. And I feel they're qualified enough to be represented in the comedy to choose the next Miss Universe. As for backstage, I just love the fact that they used performers like Olivia Culpo and Vanessa Lackey to be the backstage host. I feel like Miss Universe have tons and tons of qualified and well-spoken formers that they can use to host the backstage and I am pretty sure that the audience and the Miss Universe fans would love to see these girls again. I mean, not just as judges, but as actually part of the show. Even though it was a pretty short edition, like about 10 days, I felt like it was a great one overall. Now let's talk about the finalists. I had published my official prediction video of Miss Universe 2019 the other day, and I'm pretty sure many of you guys have already seen it. From my list, it turns out that 11 made it 
to the top 20. And these were Colombia, Brazil, USA, India, Indonesia, Philippines, France, Thailand, South Africa, Iceland, and Croatia. The candidate from my list who shocked me the most for not making it to top 20 was Ireland. Not every day you get to have a woman that works for the NASA at Miss Universe. So I really thought she would eventually win her way in the top. About the surprises of the night, for me, Portugal was a total surprise because I didn't see her coming, but I thought she really ended up being super sweet. And also Nigeria. Nigeria was not on my radar. Some other surprises of the night for me was Philippines not making it to top 10. I had not imagined the swimsuit or gown competition without her. Brazil not making it to top 10. India not making it to top 10. For the top five, some big surprises for me were USA not making it to top five because I was really looking forward to hearing her speak. And I know if they had given her that opportunity, she would have probably been South Africa's biggest competitor. Also Indonesia not making it to top five. However, her country should be really proud of her because she gave her country the highest placement they've ever had at Miss Universe up until now. For the top three, the big surprises for me was to see Puerto Rico and Mexico there because as you all know, they were not in my prediction list and they were not on my list, not because I didn't see they were front runners. These girls clearly have tons of experience. I didn't put them on my list because I thought they really looked like the typical Miss from the Trump era. They really surprised me in question and answer because I saw that they were very well spoken and they both had a powerful message to share. And this leads me to the last part of my review. I felt like this year has been one of the strongest year for Miss Universe in terms of profile of the contestant. It was a very strong selection because I felt like all the contestant from the top either had a strong platform or a very powerful message to share. And it was just so inspiring to see. I felt all the contestants did very well in swimsuit and in gown. But if I have to say something, then I really loved how fierce Puerto Rico and USA were in their swimsuits. And I also loved Colombia's because it was a bit different. It was like a very central walk. So my faves in gown, South Africa, South Africa, when she went out in that dress, I could see a queen. I really love the fact that the gown was different and that I could see her winning the title like right there and then. I also love Indonesia's walk and I also love Mexico. And my favorite gowns, as in the gown itself, I really love South Africa's, Indonesia's, Colombia's, and also France's. My faves in question and answer by far South Africa because it's one thing to give an amazing answer which I felt all the answers from the top five and top three were very powerful statements but it's a whole other thing to give an answer that moves people and that's exactly what South Africa did. Just listening to her brought out all types of emotions in me. So do I think she deserved to win? Absolutely. I have no doubt she will be an amazing, amazing Miss Universe and I just can't wait to see what she will do with her year. So that's it for now. If you like this video, don't hesitate to give it a thumbs up and click on the subscribe button. And if you want to stay updated with the giveaways that I do on my Instagram, this is my Instagram account. Don't be afraid to share your thoughts in the comments.